I love being a dad. I love being a dad simply because I, I like watching my children grow up. Although I confess to you that something happened this past week that genuinely bothered me. A young man that was with us uh, in school, Presbyterian remembers him, uh, one of the Hostetler boys. It's the oldest Hostetler boy. And when we got there, he was, what, 10 years old, 9 years old, something like that? Even younger, probably younger than that, God help us. And so his dad is, a, is a, one of my best friends, Father David Hostetler, and David is a chaplain in the military uh, with the Navy, and he's serving with a, a group of Marines in Japan right now. And so on uh, Isaac's Facebook page, he posts this picture of, I assume himself, but he's as a man which I found disturbing. And he was sitting there next to a pretty girl. Very close. And I wrote him and I said, Isaac, stop this immediately. Uncle Barnabas is not ready for this. You must cease and immediately return to 10 years of age. But one of the things that I noticed about kids is kids don't know anything. They, just don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know anything. And so what do they do whenever they're going through their lives? They ask why. Dad, why is it this way? Dad, why is the sky blue? I, of course, when I started explaining, well, you know, the, the, the white light from the sun passes through the, the atmosphere that's made up of water, and it, the prism of the water passes through, and it gives it the hue of, of blue, my kids look at me like, what are you talking about? We don't understand any of that. They're not ready to understand that kind of explanation. Their papu had a better explanation, and he said, he said, Oh, Kukla, the sky is blue because God is Greek. <laughs> they understood that immediately. Oh, okay. Makes perfect sense. But I've noticed that being a parent means that I have to deal very seriously with some very, very important realities. And that is, my kids don't know stuff. They don't know to look both ways before they cross the street. So you have to teach them how to do that. They don't know that eating nothing but dessert will make you sick. All they know is they like sugar. They No, no, no. That's not fair. They adore bordering on worship sugar. They love it. Why do you think all of the cereal companies jam-pack their cereal with sugar? you got to get the kids addicted to the drug so that they'll keep buying the product so that you can afford, afford that third house on the Barbados. That's just what is, folks. But I notice as a parent, my job is to form and to shape those children's desires so they'll know what's good for them and what isn't good for them. Because our desires are what they are. And unless they're sh shaped and unless they're formed and unless they're molded in the proper way, our desires will become our enemies. Our desires will become our addictions. Our desires will become our slave masters unless we learn how to discipline our desires well. Unless we learn how to mature and grow up and learn, we will find ourselves stuck in a very difficult situation in our lives. In fact, it's interesting enough, last week they came out with a study that said that more and more young people, in fact, let me, let me put it to you the way that the study put it, that they are putting off, more and more Americans are putting off becoming adults till later in life. More and more. They're putting off becoming adults till later in life. And that's because we have passed through a period of time in our society where our parents have said, we're just going to let little Johnny and little Susie just kind of grow up and, and discover on their own. And you've got to scratch your head and wonder, 
what happened? Now, I get it. We're only reacting to what happened in the generation beforehand. But the reality is there are genuine consequences to putting off becoming an adult. More and more teenagers, and even into their 20-somethings, sometimes even into their 30s, men and women don't know how to balance a checkbook. They don't know how to fill out a job application. One story was this man was, uh, uh, was applying for a job, and he asked the, inter- the potential interviewer, he said, um, by the way, my mom is going to come with me to the interview. Guess what? He didn't get the job. And so what is it about this exaltation of adolescence over the hard work of becoming an adult? And I'm convinced, brothers and sisters, it isn't because people want to be miserable. Nobody wants to be miserable. Everybody in this room doesn't want to be, none of you want to be miserable. You want to be happy. That's what you want. You do stuff to make you happy all the time. At least you think you do. You govern your life based on your desire to be happy, to be comfortable, to be in control because that makes you happy. To have stuff because stuff makes you happy. I have stuff. Here's all my stuff. I have it in one pile. Well, maybe several piles. But I have all my stuff. In fact, Americans are so addicted to stuff, the fastest growing industry in this country is the self-storage industry. We have so much stuff, our houses can't hold all our stuff, so we rent places to put the more, of our, more of our stuff. And what do we do with our stuff? We visit our stuff now and again. <laughs> Let's go visit our stuff. It's Saturday morning. Let's go visit our stuff. We're going to go in there and open the door and say, there's our stuff. <laughs> Great. But the point is, brothers and sisters, we think this will make us happy. And I'm convinced we want to be happy, and that's not bad. That's a good thing. We want what we want. And that's reality, folks. We can't hide from reality. But what we must do, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, young people, older people, middle-aged people, parents, grandparents, pay attention this morning. What we must do is discover how to tame our desires so that they serve us rather than rule us. And the only way to do that, dear ones, is to grow up. You see, brothers and sisters, this is the message of the Orthodox Christian faith. The normal orthodoxy trains men and women to discipline their passions so that their passions are their servants and not their masters. That's normal orthodoxy. Normal orthodoxy is designed, the reason why Father Barnabas is dressed this way, by the way, do you know that the purpose of a sermon is to answer the so what question? You realize that, don't you? One of the things that I've learned about being a parent, that the phrase, well, that's just the way we do it, will last about 15 to 18 seconds. Especially in a day and age of the Internet, where all the kids have to do is Google their question, and they'll get 15 million other people who aren't you shaping their ideas and their thoughts. Is that what you want? They'll have a whole world of other people who will be happy to answer their question when you don't know how to answer their question. Normal orthodoxy is designed so that men and women will learn how to tame their passions so that they will enjoy being with God. God has given you your desires. They are not bad. But they are untamed and undisciplined. And unless you do the hard work of a purposeful faith, You will, gang, if I had the tool, I'd crack open each of your little skulls and just make sure I put a star beside this and highlight it with big, bright yellow. You're either going to confront this reality or you're going to live a life gripped by your desires and your addictions. And you're never going to be free. The message of normal orthodoxy to you today, the reason why we have the icons, the reason why we have the iconostas, the reason why Father Barnabas is dressed this way, the reason why we have this liturgy is all about teaching you, training you, helping you become a sober and grown up and mature human being so that you'll enjoy God. Now that's the message of the orthodox faith. The message of the orthodox faith is the bait... (laughs) that we're supposed to use 
to catch every human being so that they'll know God and how much he loves them. It's the reason why this passage of Scripture this morning is so significant. This is the first Sunday of St. Luke. We are, the church is transitioning us away from the beginning of the church year, and she's moving us toward November the 15th where we begin Winter Lent. You understand that every bit, every bit of the movement of the church, all of the Orthodox church calendar, normal orthodoxy is all about shaping and training you and helping you deal with your life so that you will remember God and not forget Him. That's the purpose of the faith. So the church gives us this first Sunday of St. Luke to move us toward November the 15th when we will launch Winter Lent to prepare for the Feast of the Nativity. Normal Orthodoxy never has Christmas catch, uh, catch them by surprise. Never. It's like the old preacher said, the, the way to preach a sermon is to tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Well, that's what the Orthodox calendar will do for you, folks. The faith will never catch, 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 up, catch you by surprise ever again if you just pay attention. And that's the message that we have today. Pay attention, grow up, become orthodox on purpose. So this message that the church gives us in today's gospel lesson is significant. Jesus is beginning to teach the crowd. He's beginning to get popular and he comes up on two boys, actually two, two boats, and uh, the, the folks that are all partners in their fishing ex expedition and their fishing jobs, they're cleaning their nets. They've been working all night long. And at that time you fished at night. We still fish at night, don't we? Because the best thing to do is fish at night because what happens when the water gets warm? What do those cold-blooded fish do? They go to the bottom. So you want to fish when it's cool up at the top, so the fish will be up at the top. Especially if you're using nets to catch fish. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't either until I studied this. So they'd fished all night long, but they were, they were cleaning their nets. And Jesus uses, gets into a boat. It belongs to Simon Peter. And he, he, said, he pushes out a little bit, and he sits down and starts teaching the people. They're all gathered there on the shore. Why do you think Jesus did that? By the way, this is free. It doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about, but it's just information for you. So you won't be dumb. You don't need to be dumb. Folks, you don't get extra points for being dumb. You don't get extra, it's not, that's not a value. You think about being, uh, being uninformed is not something to be proud of, okay? It's just not, it's not a good thing. So why does Jesus do that? Because Jesus is smart. Jesus knows that if he's out on the water, his voice will carry better because it's bouncing off the water and it'll go further than if he's just standing on the land. So he uses the natural acoustics of the water to be able to teach more people. Pretty smart. So Jesus, after he teaches the people, he tells Simon Peter, who's in the boat with him, uh, Simon, push out a little bit further and let down your nets and, 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 uh, and catch some fish. Simon Peter says, Lord, we've worked all night long. We didn't catch anything. Besides, he didn't add this, but I will. It's the daytime. The fish are now heading towards the bottom. We're not going to be able to throw the nets down that deep. Uh, there's tons of reasons for me to look at you and say, sorry, buddy, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to stay right here. I just finished cleaning these nets. And now you want me to send them down again? But what does Simon Peter say? Simon Peter says, Lord, we worked all night. We didn't catch anything. But because you say so, I'll do it. Why do you think Jesus did that? Because Jesus wanted to show his gratitude for Peter letting him use his boat. You see, brothers and sisters, that's what normal people do when they're given a gift. They show their gratitude. It's only a broken and turned in on itself heart that can't be grateful. So Simon Peter sends out his, his boat. They let the net down. Of course, you know the story. They can't carry all the fish. They start, they, they start filling the fish. Simon Peter calls up to the sons of Zebedee. By the way, that means the sons of thunder. Um, Peter, uh, uh, James and John, hey, boys, y'all come help us. We're going under. So they send out their boat. They got out there, and they start filling out their boat, and they both start sinking because of all the fish. See what happens when you obey? You get more than you bargained for. Simon Peter realizes what's happening and he says, Lord, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. It is amazing when you actually come into the presence of Jesus Christ, you realize who you really are and what you really need. Your passions now are no longer your master. Now you see clearly what you really need and what you really need is a person, not a thing. You need Jesus Christ. 
Get away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And Jesus says, Simon, don't be afraid. I'm going to make you a fisher of men from now on. And I'm going to give you the boat, and it'll never sink. The boat is the church. It'll never spring a leak. It'll always be decorated and, 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 and given all the tools it will need to draw all men to Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you the net of humility where you're going to admit that you need Jesus Christ and you can't do this without Jesus Christ. The net of humility. And if you let down that net, you'll pull in all of the folks. And the bait you're going to use, brothers and sisters, is the message that I give you this morning. God loves you. God loves you more than you yourself know how to love. And He wants you to be free. He doesn't want you to be a slave to your desires. He doesn't want you to be uninformed about how to tame your passions. God doesn't want you to constantly stumble through life in the dark, making it up as you go. God wants to give you everything you need to become the human being that God has made you to be. In fact, He has lavished in His church every tool you will ever need to know how to do that. And this morning, God opens the gates of heaven and pours out everything you will ever need right here. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I don't always understand, but because you say so, I'll do it. Amen.